So to start, we're logging on to Google and typing in Defont Monogram. So this is just a font website, and you're going to click on the first link, which says Monogram KK Font, and then you're going to go click Download, and that will download it to wherever it normally goes on your computer. Once you've done that, you're going to open up the file and you are going to click on the little picture that shows the monogram on it and open it. Then you're going to click install font. I've already installed this font so it's going to show up a little bit different, but it's going to pop up in font book and then you are going to go file validate font. And then it's going to pop up underneath user, you'll be able to see the font. And then you're good. If you already have Word open, you may have to quit it and then reopen it and then the font will appear. Now we're going back to Google and I'm going to type in Lily Pulitzer Backgrounds. Once you get to the images section, you go to search tools on Google and you click size and you choose a large picture. This is just going to give you the larger file size so the picture is going to be clear when we blow it up for the cover. So you're just going to find one you like. I suggest doing one that is vertical because typically binder covers are vertical. So I found this kind of hibiscus print one. There, right there that I really liked and so I'm just going to click it and drag it to my desktop. Then we're going to go back onto YouTube and we're going to type in PicMonkey. This is a photo editing site and you're going to click edit and then choose the file that you've chosen as your background. Then you're going to go over to the little butterfly overlay icon and go to geometric under that tab and then choose the circle. You're going to expand the circle to make it bigger to the size that you want then you're just going to adjust it and make sure that it is in the center of the background and that it's kind of the position you wanted mine. I wanted mine more towards the middle but not exactly in the middle. And then I'm changing colors 1 and 2 to white. You can choose any color you want. You could choose a color that matches the background. It's your choice. Then you're scrolling down under that same butterfly overlay icon to where it says labels and you are going to choose the kind of polka dotted circle one and you're just going to size it to fit it how you want it. You could do the dots around the outside of that white circle. I'm choosing them to do them on the inside. Then you're just choosing whatever color you want to do those polka dotted circles in. I'm choosing the pinkish kind of color but it does take me a second to get exactly the pink that I want. I'm a perfectionist so I wanted it to match as perfectly as possible. Then I was feeling that that pink polka dotted circle wasn't exactly centered on the white circle but for some reason it will not let me move it unless I move the white circle down first and then move the pink circle then I'm moving the white circle back where I want it and then I can put the pink circle over the top of it just perfectly how I like it. So once that's adjusted, then you can go up to the top and press save. I'm going to save this in the greatest quality possible, which is the farthest right one, and I'm going to save this as Binder Cover 3. I made a few other ones, so that's why it's the third one. And I'm going to press save to my computer, and I'm going to save it to my desktop because that'll be easiest to access it later. And now I'm going to Pages and opening up a new blank file. You could also use Microsoft Word for this, it doesn't matter. So I'm dragging that image onto the Pages document here and sizing it to how I want it to be. I don't want to cut off the Lily Pulitzer little logo at the bottom, so I'm not sizing it to fit the entire page. If you don't mind, you could perfectly do that, it's your choice. And now I'm grabbing a new text box and I'm going to change the font size to 150 because for a monogram you want your first initial on the left, your middle initial on the right, and then in the middle your last name initial. That's if you're not married. If you are married it's more common for you to put your first initial on the left, your maiden initial on the right, and then your married last name initial in the middle. So now I'm just kind of resizing the M, making sure it's right in the middle, and then I'm clicking on it, highlighting it, and changing the color of the font to that kind of aqua blue in the background. You can choose any color you want. I suggest using the little magnifying glass to set the color so it will match one of the background colors perfectly. Now I'm grabbing a text box and I'm going to do the first letter initial. I'm choosing an E. Once again, this is just a random letter and you change it to size 115 for the font. You do want these to be smaller than that um, last name initial in the middle. So once again, just choosing that same aqua color. 
I'm actually dragging it down to the bottom so I can just reuse it later. Now under the formatting, I'm just clicking none so I can see the other initial, changing the size of my text box, and then kind of overlapping the spirally ends of the monogrammed letters like you traditionally would. And then I'm going to get another text box and add the middle initial. I've chosen an A. I'm going to highlight this, change it to the monogram font, change it to size 115. Then once again, I'm just changing the color to that aqua color that I've saved. I'm going to arrange and then click no formatting. And then just making the text box smaller and lining it up so that the spirals overlap with the M spirals, making sure that the E and the A also line up. Then I'm kind of just messing around with the sizing of things, not like the actual font size, but just like the placement of the initials. I thought maybe they weren't exactly in the center, and once again, I'm a perfectionist, so I was like, oh my gosh, it needs to be in the center. And so that's what you're kind of seeing me do here, just moving it around. I love that Pages has those little lines so it can help me line things up. So we're just keep doing that until you like it and then pretty much this is the final product. You can go and press print. I suggest printing it on cardstock and then we're done.